Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the savior. For this video, I want to talk to you guys about both the LGBT as well as Islam. So, to start off this video, to put everyone on the same page, I want to get a couple of things out of the way. The first one being is, I am not trying to turn this into a political war about um, what religion is right, which one's best, or about, you know, um, lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgenders, I'm not trying to get into that. I'm simply um, telling you how it is viewed here in Japan, not whether it's right or wrong, or my own personal beliefs. So I'm going to talk to you from an unbiased point of view, but I will be telling you, I guess, a biased point as to how people, I don't even know how to explain it, how people view it here. So, I'm not trying to turn this into an argument in the comments, please do not attack each other or anything like that, that's not what this is made for. So, the second thing that I want to get out of the way, which I will emphasize throughout this video probably, is you have to understand two things. There's a difference between tolerance and acceptance. And the second thing that you have to keep in mind is that just because you see something on TV or in a book or even in a newspaper article does not mean that it's real. So the first thing that I want to get out of the way to, you know, long story short, Japan does not accept either. Now notice my choice of words there. I never said that they don't exist. I did not say that they do not have churches and organizations and red light districts and bars and social groups. I did not say that you cannot find people that are a part of this religion or that identify with this gender or sexuality. I simply said Japan does not accept either. Japanese people are not like Americans. They are not like Europeans. They are not confrontational, they are not argumentative, sorry I butchered that word, I hate it. <laughs> they do not like to start crap. And with that being said and done, people generally keep their opinions to themselves. But if you were born and raised here, you can generally tell what someone's thinking and or how they feel. Japanese people express their wants, dislikes, their okays and not okays within their family. They share their expectations. It is not normal for a Japanese person to condemn you or tell you that they don't agree with what you're saying or your lifestyle. And with that said and done, people who belong to Islam, people who identify as being gay or lesbian or bisexual, are not normally going to be confronted here in Japan. And with that said and done, it gives the illusion that Japanese people accept them. But the problem isn't... <laughs> So much that you know they can't exist here in Japan, that they cannot have organizations here in Japan, is that these people, these beliefs, these organizations, these churches, these bars, these etc., whatever type things, they are not accepted amongst the Japanese people. It is hard for foreigners to really understand this because, unfortunately, like most foreigners naturally, you will find yourself trapped inside of what we call the Gaijin bubble, meaning that you typically hang out with other foreigners or you hang out with internationalized Japanese people, which is my fancy way of saying Japanese people who don't really act Japanese. They have been influenced by other cultures, other countries, generally AKA America and American media and movies and music. Thus, they're very free spirited. They accept everyone, they accept everything. They're not racist, they're not homophobes, whatever. They're not Islamophobes, whatever you know word you wanna use. They don't normally identify as any of those things, or at least they don't come off that way. They love to learn and hear about different cultures, different sexualities, etc. They're open. But that's another mistake that people tend to make. Someone listening to you in Japan, someone saying that they don't see the big deal, is basically Japanese for, I'm going to listen to you out of respect. Because you are a foreigner, I want different insight. And I do not want to argue with you. Different culture, different whatever. Just because someone listens to you does not mean that they agree with your religion or agree with your lifestyle or sexual preferences and choices, etc. I'm not going to get into that with you about your feelings on it, but I'm saying how people talk and communicate here in Japan. So something really interesting that I learned actually from going to school. I took a class that was on um, sexuality in Japan, 
And it was very interesting to see my classmates, who were almost entirely Japanese. There were only a few other foreigners in this class. My classmates openly um, said, without no filter, that basically they decided on their own that they don't really care, and that a couple of them, you know, had friends who were, you know, closeted uh, homosexuals or closeted, you know, bisexual, whatever the case was. But they pretty much just flat out said, like, look, my parents told me to stay away from these people and not to hang out with them. They don't want me, you know, to be gay. They don't want me to marry somebody like that. And it all really comes down to a couple of things. Japan does not believe that it can be scientifically proven that someone can be born gay. And Japan does not see Islam as coinciding or, you know, being a peaceful religion that is okay for, you know, Japanese culture. They do not agree with, you know, the Quran, if you will, and based off of seeing things that have happened with America and other countries, when people who are of, you know, that belong to Islam, that are, you know, Muslim, have entered countries, they associate it with terrorism. And to my knowledge, I'm not 100% sure if this is true or not, but it is actually um, against the law, if I recall, for you to actually even learn, um, for there to be schools that teach Arabic. It's hard to find books and things like that, and the Quran can only be um, available in Japan if it is written in Japanese and or English, not in Arabic or you know other languages and such. I'm not 100% sure about this. I can be wrong. This is what I have read. I can be wrong on that. But my point is, is Japanese people find it to be scary. They, you know, tolerate people who are Islamic. They want your money. <laughs> they want your money if you're gay. They want your money if you are a Muslim but they don't accept you. They don't want you to, you know, brainwash their people, their children, their kids, etc. I am not getting into my two cents on, you know, my own opinions. I'm telling you what I learned from talking to Japanese people as well as taking college classes with Japanese kids. So most of these kids basically didn't give their own two cents or opinion. They pretty much said how their family felt. But it let me know, oh, so this is actually very interesting. I would have never thought this. And same thing. So some of these people that were actually getting up and talking, I have actually seen them hang out with people that I knew at my school, you know, that were openly, you know, gay or bisexual. But you would have never known this by the way that they act around them. And so really the same thing can be said in America. Um, there are plenty of people who do not like black people. There are plenty of people who do not like gay people or people that are Islamic. But the same thing remains. They want your money. Maybe they don't feel comfortable with, you know, telling you how they really feel, so they'll just keep it to themselves, which obviously makes more sense. I would rather someone shut their mouth than be openly ignorant towards me. So, getting back on topic, the same thing goes for Japan. What I really want to get into is, a lot of people seem to think that because in Japan you see all of this stuff in the media talking about parades and how they have a red light district um, in Tokyo where they have a whole bunch of gay bars and whatnot in Shinjuku, and it's all fake. <laughs> yes, it exists. Yes, they have parades. Um, yes, you know, they have, um, you know, gay bars in Japan. But for starts, there aren't that many people that go to these events and these things. It's mostly foreigners which is also why a lot of these bars actually don't even allow foreigners to enter them, believe it or not. Secondly, not just that, it is seen as a somewhat shameful and embarrassing thing. You are not going to go outside and see people that are flamboyant, so to speak, and that are open with their sexuality, particularly men. They are not going to dress, um, you know, wear feminine clothing, dress like women, talk like them, etc. You're not going to see things like that here in Japan. Does it happen? Yes. But can you count it on one hand? Most certainly you can, unless you plan to live, um, you know, next to a bar or something, a gay bar. Um, as far as Islam goes, yes, there are Japanese native people here that are Islamic, but it is not very common. It is more of a rare thing. Most of the mosques here, most of the Islamic groups and organizations that I have personally seen and people that I have befriended, it consists of mostly people who are half Japanese and half, you know, Middle Eastern or it is, you know, people that are foreigners. Are there Japanese people here that are 100% Japanese? Yes, it does exist. But once again, you're probably going to have a really hard time finding a mosque that is 100% Japanese. Not to say that that's the goal per se, but my point is there aren't that many Japanese people that are Islamic in the first place. So it's really just associated with those who are, you know, foreigners here. Which also leads me into the fact that Japan actually makes it very difficult for people who are Islamic to live in Japan, particularly if you are a woman, because it is more noticeable what your religion is if you wear a hijab. So, getting on the topic of that, 
In Japan, when you are renting a home or getting a job, you are generally required to submit a headshot of yourself in which they will be able to make out what ethnicity you are, they get a copy of your passport, things like that. And obviously coming from the Middle East or even China or other, you know, countries in which Japan has problems with or negative beliefs and stereotypes towards, it can make it very difficult for you to get a job, get a house, etc. here in Japan. So once again, they tolerate you. You'll probably have no trouble finding a place at a share house. But when it comes to wanting to get involved in the real world or wanting to become a citizen here, good luck with that. Again, Japan does whatever they can to get your money. So they want to make themselves seem like they're being progressive, that they're moving forward, um, especially with the Olympics coming up right around the corner. Anything that is seen as, you know, politically correct, if you will, aka treating people like decent human beings, <laughs> they want to put in the spotlight, in the media. They want all of the English papers to see this and know about it because they want to encourage people to come to Japan and to not view Japan in a negative spotlight. Japan is known for having rules. They're known for being bad towards foreigners. So they want to clear their name, clear the negative image that people associate with Japan. So beyond just you know the fun anime and the porn industry and video games, Japan is well aware that a lot of people think that they are prejudiced. And with that said and done, one of the first questions that people tend to ask me here is, why did I come to Japan? And whenever I ask them, like, why are you asking me that? They always say that they're shocked that, you know, me obviously being a black woman, me being a foreigner, like, oh, I didn't think, you know, foreign girls like Asian men. I would think that, you know, maybe you've experienced prejudice being here because you're a foreigner, things like that. So with that said and done, Japan is aware <laughs> of these bad things about their country. Not to say that other countries don't have the same problem. I'm simply saying that Japan is not stupid. They are aware of these things. And so obviously because they want your money, they're open up, opening up restaurants that cater to people who have certain faiths. They're opening up bars and restaurants that cater, you know, beyond just religion, but even people that are vegan. <laughs> so again, these are not normal things in Japan. People that are internationalized, like my boyfriend even, you know, might get into trying to be a vegan for a second or, you know, vegetarian or whatever, or they might choose to practice a religion for a moment. But to them, it's just fun, it's just a phase, it's a part of culture, but it's not really a way of living. Contrary to what a lot of people think, Japanese people are actually very religious, but they don't normally have a legitimate relationship with any type of God. <laughs> so there's no faithfulness to any particular religion. Japanese people generally pray, they generally go to shrines and temples um, when they're in time of need or, you know, need answers, etc. But they do not normally attend any type of religious ceremony on a regular basis, nor do they read any specific kind of Bible. With that said and done, Japanese people are well aware of different religions, and they try to be respectful of it. But again, it's a difference between tolerating people of different beliefs and accepting them, which a lot of people tend to get wrong. So will you get beat up and people curse you out for you being gay or being um, Islamic? No, it's very unlikely. Can and do people do this? Yes. I've personally had a couple of friends that actually went back home because they were being bullied in school and not just from Japanese students, but actually from Vietnamese students as well. It is, you know, it's not really much of a secret outside of Thailand to my knowledge, which I can be wrong on this too. Um, people who are gay are not generally accepted really in most of the world, but particularly in Asia. Asia is known as being kind of behind with the times, if you will, as far as acceptance goes. Again, putting all politics and religion aside, I think we can all agree that no matter what your religion is, no matter what your sexuality is, we all deserve to be treated fairly. We all deserve to be treated, you know, like decent human beings. You shouldn't have to worry about being bullied or having trouble finding housing or a job because of your sexual choices or your religious preference and choice and things like that. That should never affect your life. <laughs> it should not cause you to want to kill yourself. And unfortunately, this is a very real reality. So my point is, don't fall for it or think that, you know, oh, but they have, you know, lesbian characters in Sailor Moon or inside this anime or, oh, you know, look at this. That's the equivalent of saying that Japan has no problems with Chinese people because look at Rama. Rama went to China or, <laughs> or like, we use America or saying like, oh, there's no such thing as prejudice in America. There's no racism there because we have black sitcoms and they have uh, predominantly black neighborhoods and there's black actors. Okay, your point. And the KKK is still real. <laughs> so... It's basically the equivalent of that. This is TV and fantasy. There's TV and fantasy in America too. There's fan fiction. There's made up stories and books, etc. 
taboo things are obviously cool to write about. Look at Black Panther. This was something that was written about back way before black people were really, you know, even in the media, really actors, really, you know, able to openly, you know, speak up and easily find jobs and houses. Things were much harder back then. But yet we had people that were protesting for us, fighting for us, and helping us to, you know, make things fair and equal. And I mean, look, the person, Stan Lee, who wrote that uh, comic book, he was a white guy. Does that mean that because, oh, like a white guy wrote uh, Black Panther, so there's no such thing as racism in America. Everything's fine, all is good. No, it's just a book, it's just a comic book, it's just fun, it's, you know, it's fictional. <laughs> and basically the same thing goes for Japan. Don't use manga and anime or video games as a basis for this stuff. It's generally, obviously, you know, people have a fetish. Unfortunately, gay people are fetishized, even for people that are not gay. A lot of guys find it hot to see two girls make out, boobs, flying everywhere, etc. There are a lot of men who are closeted, um, including manga writers, etc. Obviously, you can express yourself when you make these comic books and you can appeal to other people who feel and you know have the same sexual preferences as you that obviously cannot write, cannot draw, but they see that, oh, somebody else thinks, feels, and you know they have the same sexuality that I do, so it's relatable. And that's basically what all it is. So don't think that because you see a comic book or that Japan has this or, oh, they show this to kids. Keep in mind that a lot of the stuff that you see in America actually, although it is anime, manga, whatever, it's not really geared towards children. And a lot of these shows that have really inappropriate sexual scenes actually come on at night. And parents do complain and they do write into these stations when inappropriate things are shown. So do not be fooled. Um, off of that, again, with religion and LGBT, they have parades, they have mosques, they exist, they're here, they're living. No, they are not being stoned down and harassed every single day, but believe it or not, a lot of people here are not accepting towards it. They do not like this, um, you know, lifestyle, this culture, this whatever you want to call it, this movement. They're not okay with it. They're accepting towards it only <laughs> in a tolerance way when it comes to getting your dollars. They want you to tour here but they don't want you to live here. They don't want you to work here. They are not okay with you. They're okay with you inside their fantasy anime books. They're okay with you when they're watching music videos like I Kissed a Girl. They're fine with that type of stuff, but they don't want the real thing, so to speak. So with that said and done, all I'm saying is do not believe everything that you see on TV. Do not believe these English newspapers and whatnot that try to highlight, you know, um, you know, things that have to do with, you know, Islam and LGBT. They're written from an American and or an English perspective. They want to make Japan seem nice and seem progressive. But the reality is Japan is so far behind and they're not really trying to change. When you talk to most young people um, here in Japan, they will tell you that they don't really care, but at the end of the day, they don't really support it either. They don't believe and, you know, they're not religious in that sense in which they believe in Allah, and they do not believe that people cannot choose their sexuality. They believe that sexuality is a choice. And again, I'm not getting into my own personal opinions on the stuff, I'm telling you what other people think. And with that said and done, while most young people don't really give a crap, Somebody not caring doesn't mean they support you. That's the equivalent of saying like, oh, I don't care if you're black or white, but I'm not gonna bother to fight for you guys' freedom. I don't own slaves, my neighbors do, not my problem. <laughs> and that's exactly what it's like here in Japan. That's a kind of extreme example, but it's essentially the same thing. These people are not going to get in the way or stop you per se from doing your thing, but at the same time, they're not really going to be backing you up and have your support. A lot of Japanese people go to these parades and whatnot because they're fun. Just like in America, a lot of people who are not gay and that don't even support it go to it for the fun of it. They want to see the wild and crazy stuff. They want to see girls making out with each other and guys wearing thongs. That's what they're there for. To them it's fun, it's entertaining. It's like, wow, I'm getting a taste of American culture. Is how they see it. It's just a game. I have Japanese friends who have pretended to be interested in Islam while they traveled in the Middle East. I've had friends who have traveled to India and decided they wanted to be vegetarians. All kind of like really weird stuff. And to my knowledge, it's like, are there even a lot of Indians who are vegetarians? I have no idea. I'm ignorant, so I'm not even going to get into that. I'm simply letting you know that for a lot of people, you know, it's just a game, basically. It's a game for them. They want to experiment and try stuff out, as well as the fact that, you know, they just don't want to ruffle any feathers. They're like, look, as long as it's not affecting me, I don't really care. But no, you're not going to have my vote and my support. It just doesn't matter to me. I don't personally, you know, want my children to be gay. I'm not gay. I don't believe this is a real thing. 
and yeah, don't really care. A lot of people fear Islam, they associate it with terrorism. Again, not getting into you know people's personal feelings, I'm saying how Japanese people view it in general. Um, Islam is associated with terrorism. They think of 9-11, they think of it as dangerous, fearful, it doesn't align with Japanese culture and lifestyle. Yes, there's Japanese people that are gay. Yes, there's Japanese people that are um, Muslim. It exists, they're here, they're living, they're thriving. But once again, there aren't that many people that are openly either of these things. And there aren't that many people, you know, who are going to honestly support it. <laughs> people will show up to parades. People will, you know, say nice little pretty things to get, you know, Western media's attention. But when you really need them, they won't have your back. They won't have your vote. Again, like I said, I have friends here that were heartbroken. They had people who they thought were their friends. But when they had went out in public or when they went, you know, out for the rest of, you know, out with the rest of their classmates at school and people joked about, you know, their gender or joked about, you know, them being gay or lesbian, etc., their so-called friends didn't have their back, didn't support them, basically left them hanging, which made them homesick and go back home. Um, as far as Islam goes, I personally don't have any close friends who are Islamic, but I do know of people who are, and I have some associates who are, and for the most part, once again, they've never really experienced any negative um, behavior as far as people talking to them, but generally people do act a little bit funny, like as far as not wanting to sit next to you on the train, um, it's difficult to get a job if you're wearing a hijab or you're open about your religion, etc. Different people have different experiences. There's no one size fits all. Every gay person in Japan has not had a perfect sunny side, you know, cupcakes and rainbow experience. Everyone who is Islamic in Japan has not had, you know, a perfect nobody messed with me, everyone sat next to me experience. Everyone's experience is totally different here. I'm simply saying that do not be fooled by anime. Do not be fooled by all of these, you know, new propagandists coming up talking about how there's mosque and wheels and LGBT parades and people being condemned for, you know, saying that people that are gay are unproductive and hurting society. That's actually how most Japanese people really feel. The difference is, once again, people are trying to hush these older people so that this way they don't ruin things for when the Olympics show up. They don't want Western countries to condemn them. Japanese people hate shame. They hate being talked about. They hate Japan's name being lifted in a negative light. And they would do anything at any cost, at all costs, to avoid that happening. So in order to keep that from happening, Japanese people will obviously fake and pretend to be in support of things that they're really not to make their country's name look good. The last thing that I want to mention is, as far as people that are gay goes, you will almost never see gay people just, you know, walking out and about in the street, being very flamboyant, flaunting themselves. I kind of said this, but I want to get into more detail as to how they exist. So obviously gay people exist everywhere in the world, whether they are legally allowed to exist or if they are closeted. And in Japan, pretty much everyone who is gay is closeted. You normally cannot work at your company being openly gay and acting like the opposite sex of whatever you know you were born as per se. They do not allow that. Sex changes do exist, but again, they're very, very rare, and normally people will just cross-dress, so to speak. Even as far as that goes, this is not something you can openly do at your job or that you're openly doing in public. These people normally, you know, do this type of stuff in red light districts, tourist areas, gay bar areas, as well as online. If you use um, Tinder or Scout, Meet Me, any of these social apps that I recommended in my video on how to make friends in Japan, you will come across a lot of ladyboys, lesbian women, gay men, etc. Many of which you have their faces hidden, but others who put on a totally new persona, they're wearing a wig, um, you know, drag makeup, etc. This is their outlet, their way that they can, you know, feel like they can be themselves. Finally, now they're at home, online, they can use fake screen name, etc. They cannot do this out in the real world. And again, you know, doing so makes it where they're a target and they're set up to get bullied, basically. So they exist here, they do date. And do keep in mind that as far as that goes as well, Japanese people that are in support of this type of thing, they view it pretty much how Americans kind of do. It is seen as someone who is basically just having fun, experimenting. It's seen more, being gay is seen more as a fetish and more as an experiment than a actual lifestyle or a way that someone is born here in Japan. Again, most people aren't, you know, like, oh, I hate gay people, but they're basically like, well, as long as it's not me, as long as it's not my kids, I'm okay, I want grandkids, I don't support that, you know, crazy Western, you know, stuff, I don't want that to happen here, but yeah, sure, America can do that, sure, tourists can come here, just don't live here. <laughs> it's basically how it is. 
as far as Islam goes, Japanese people view it as a scary religion. They think of, you know, New York. They love New York. <laughs> and for that to have happened there, it's like, oh my God. Um, you know, Japan has a very, very, very strict uh, visa system for people from the Middle East. Um, they don't even allow you to travel um, to certain countries here in Japan. You can actually lose your citizenship, if I recall, if you visit particular countries. Um, they're very restrictive with um, Islamic stuff that is available here in Japan, but I'm no expert on this stuff. All I'm saying is, once again, most people view it as a scary religion and they don't see it as, you know, something that is very Japanese per se. It is seen as going against the religion, going against their upbringing. Um, again, most Japanese people are religious, but they don't belong to a religion. And again, a lot of them, you know, see it as something that's scary and crazy. They don't understand the concept of why would a woman want to cover herself? Why don't the men have to do this? Why do they, you know, blow up places, do whatever? They believe in all of the stereotypes and negative things that they've seen online, despite the fact that, of course, the people that are living here, you know, has anything happened like that in Japan yet? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But they are fearful of something like that happening in the future, so they would obviously prefer to monitor people who are Islamic, and they don't want to live with people who are, and they don't want to give visas to people who belong to this religion. That's making it very difficult for people to be openly or, you know, actively, you know, serious about their religion. And what I mean by that is, I don't know the right word to use, but for example, you can be a Christian, but you might not be serious about your religion. You're just like, oh, if you ask me, I say I'm a Christian type thing. There's people like that here in Japan who, which is why they're here in the first place, they consider themselves to be Islamic, but they don't really practice, don't really pray, worship, attend mosque. But if you ask them, they're like, oh, well, yeah, my parents are Islamic, so yeah, I'm a Muslim too. And also to, I guess, give myself a little bit of whatever. My family is actually Islamic. I personally am not. So I am very much aware of the things that people here that are Islamic go through. It's very subliminal, the shade that they get. People are not normally very open. They normally just get looks, side eyes, and people avoid sitting next to them is the way that it generally goes. Um, as for my grandma and my relatives, basically the same thing happens to them in America. But here in Japan, I notice it much more obviously because there are not a lot of people here that are um, religious and specifically that belong to Islam. Once again, most of the people here in Japan don't really care, but don't confuse someone not caring with them supporting it. Japanese people don't want to be viewed as negative, so they will obviously say whatever it takes to make people think of their country in a positive light. And as far as, you know, with the Olympics coming up, they want to seem as open and welcoming to people from everywhere. They simply want your money. They want you to buy their books. They want you to, you know, game in their country. They want you to pay for the sex industry. They want you to come here. But they don't want you to live here. They don't want you to make families here. They don't want you to get married here, etc. These are stereotypes and generalizations. All Japanese people are not bad. Not all people are, you know, against this. Not all people are unsupportive. I'm simply saying that most are not. So, that is that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please email them to me or leave them in the comments down below. Please, 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 please do not argue. I'm not trying to start a religion war or a political war on what you think about, you know, um, the LGBT or Islam. Again, despite whatever your religious beliefs are, we can all agree that everyone deserves to be treated as an equal human being regardless of your religion, regardless of your sexuality or preferences or anything else like that. No one should ever be bullied. No one should ever feel like they have to kill themselves. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below or send me an email. Thank you for watching. Bye.